Yep, yep. All right, we are back. Uh, NFC episode 20. We have an amazing, 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 amazing guest uh, tonight. Uh, yes, it's episode 20. We're super excited. I want to get to know you. There's a huge resume. I want you to tell us about yourself. Before we get there, I want to talk about WT and his mustache real quick. Let him introduce himself and what's going on. Uh, WT, how are you, my friend? What's new and exciting? Talk to us. Doing great. First of all, happy Mother's Day to everybody. Yes. yes. NFC cast, we don't stop, even on Mother's Day. Uh, yeah, that's just that's just how we roll. Been looking forward so much to this interview with Justin Kruger. So much just oh, stuff in your resume. I don't want to give it all away. We're going to get into it here. But having a great week. The mustache is growing. My <laughs> wife still hates it. My daughter hates it. But the guys at work, they love it. The guy's got your back. Great stash. I it, love the stash. It is a great. I'm just. I'm telling you, it's a big caterpillar. It's gonna turn into a butterfly. That's what I keep telling. One day he's gonna fly out of the here. Uh, just, I want to talk to you, my friend. Uh, you have a lot of experience in 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 the industry. You worked for Ubisoft for six plus years. Uh, you have the pat. You've worked in the past with Mythical Games for a couple years. Who were part of uh, Blancos. Uh, you're heavily involved with the game. I want you to tell us about you. Let us know. Let the world know. Let the community know more about you. Uh, who is Justin? Let's hear it. <laughs> Well, thank you guys so much for having me on your your cast here. I'm I'm a big fan, uh, and uh, I, I I love what you guys are creating here. Absolutely, absolutely enjoy it and and love it. Um, for me, uh, you know, I've spent the last twelve years in this in the video game industry, um, and and social media, focusing primarily on social media, uh, product marketing, and community building. And community building has taken up the majority of that time. About you know seven years at Ubisoft, uh, a year uh, about a year at Bioware, um, and then leading the, the the community team over at Mythical Games, and now heading up the community team here at, at GOG. And yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much my resume in a nutshell. Um, but bottom line is I'm a community builder, uh, a, pro, a professional community builder <laughs> through and through. You know, that's in my blood. I've been doing this since I was eight years old. And, uh, uh, you know, my, um, uh, my friends would get in an argument and I'd be the one Hot, jumping in moderating that argument and um and then you know that carried out through through high school and and through college this is just who i am you know awesome. connecting people connecting with people online um that's that's just who i am from uh from from the ground up you're built for this that's amazing i got <laughs> i gotta say a couple things one you have the perfect voice i mean this is oh, incredible and and you. the background <laughs> the background's phenomenal uh you have the perfect voice this is amazing so uh first of all i want to say again thank you for for coming in and talking with us uh we appreciate you very very much um a lot of experience absolutely incredible uh and i we have some questions we want to we want to get to know you and, and and get to you know get behind and see what's behind you and stuff so i know uh like we said you've been involved in many many many, many games before uh, and what are some of the similarities and, and the same? Uh, what are some of the differences? So similarities and differences that will set GOG uh, apart from other games. So you know, there's some similarities that you know that work. And what are some of the things that they're doing differently that will set them apart to help them, you know, uh, succeed? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. You know, I, I've worked on top tier AAA games throughout my entire career. Uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic, Assassin's Creed, Rainbow Six Siege, Hyperscape, um, For Honor, you know, Great Watch Dogs. Cool. Uh, uh, I, I've worked on a ton of ton of games, and I have never seen a more active community for a pre-alpha game in my entire career. Mm -hmm. um, GOG has so much engagement for it, so much hype, so much excitement around it. Um, that it's hard to compare, you know, GOG where it's at and, you know, the sort of scope and scale of the team that is working on it ver compared to some of the past um, games I've worked on. It, it's really unlike anything else I've I've worked on in my entire career. And that's that's the reason why I was so excited to join the team, because this community there there's so much engagement here there's so much passion mm -hmm. and i want to tap into that i want to grow that i want to make sure that you know we're looking at quite a few different tiers of and and segments of our audience in terms of you know nft holders and you know fund seekers players 
um, investors, and I want to tap into their motivations, what what excites them, and really um, really grow uh, grow the value for each of those groups. Um, but bottom line is, you know, looking at the social engagement, the engagement on Discord. The numbers that I see around, you know, pre the pre alpha demo, um, I, I I don't think there's anything else like it. Agreed. I I 100% agree with that. The team behind the game, the community behind the game, uh, absolute rock stars uh, from front and back. Absolutely. Wt. Yeah, uh, just listening to all that you're talking about the social engagement and the community and anybody that's watched our podcasts with uh, Bruno and I over the last 20 that we've done that's one thing that we've always brought up is community and you know you've got to have you got to have a good team you got to have financial backing you got to have a good backing of real deal people but the x factor is the community and everybody talks about it in this space oh we got a great community you got a great community anybody can say that but having the actual real teeth to it is a different matter and we see that here and other projects we get involved in. That's what we're looking for. How is the community? But not, o- not only is how is the community, but how is the team utilizing that community? And that's where I kind of want to get into next is one of the things I noticed when I was reading up on you is you you just, you, you, you got the smell, a good smell, by the way, <laughs> a real passion uh, for social media engagement, you can tell. And when you first got here, you jumped onto a Twitter space uh, with Stepfam, Crypto Ninja, myself, and others. And I noticed right off the bat, uh, you were listening more than talking. And I'm real big on listening more than talking because a lot of people in the space, they get nervous and they want to talk, 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 talk. And you got to talk somewhat. But when you're listening, you're learning and you're absolutely absorbing and input. And that's like the first thing I noticed about you. You were talking, but you were doing more listening. And that that really resonated with me. And where I'm going with all this is we have great people like Kalia, Ryan, Nick, uh, several others that are engaging with the community, doing awesome things with Twitter. But they kind of remind me of like the, the Star Wars scenario, you got your Han Solos, your C-3PO's, your r 2 Ditos, your Chewbacca's that make a big part of the community. But then you got these Jedi people that are sitting behind the scenes and they're like on a different wavelength than everybody else. And they can see things that not everybody else can see. And I, I'm not just fluffing here. You kind of remind me of that. So my, my ultimate question, this big rant is what drives you to get that emotional connection with people in this space? Yeah, well, I, I absolutely love that. And and <laughs> thank you for that. I appreciate that. I, uh, you know, I think there's a misconception in in, in community that um, you have to be super public, super active, uh, all, always in, in 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 the front. But my philosophy when it comes to, to building communities, it's, it's about 80 percent listening. It's about 80 percent understanding what the community wants um, and and consolidating and breaking down that feedback on a regular basis. You know, one of the thir- first things I'm doing right now is uh, is implementing all the tools we need to, to listen better um, to the community. So uh, how are we consolidating all that data, all that feedback coming in through, through Discord, through Twitter, and how are we providing that feedback loop back to the dev team? And how are we providing that feedback loop to um, you know, the people that are making the decisions and that are making the game. Um, it, 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 I believe strongly in the fact that game development is a two-way conversation, right? You have um, the, the community verbally talking to you through Discord, through Twitter, and then you have the dev team communicating back to the, to the players through the game design and through the, the programming of the actual game. Um, and in in many ways, my role is to be that mediator, that 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 um, that person that that provides the feedback both ways. Um, and so, for me, that emotional connection really is built upon anything that I would see in a relationship, um, you know, a one to one relationship with a friend or something like that. It's always built on trust, honesty, transparency, um, openness, uh, and I approach 
my communities in that same way. You know, you you have to have that two way conversation. You have to be not only trustworthy on your on your side, but also be able to trust the community's word. And that trust takes a while to, to build up. And that's built through transparency, through listening, through integrating the community's voice into the game, right? And that's so key. So like providing um, providing voting tools to the community where they can vote on, you know, which champion they, they want to see balanced or, or which ultimate they want to see buffed or, um, you know, things like that down the line is where we're going to get to. Um, and even, you know, smaller things like naming a champion. I, I think that would be cool. Providing votes to to the community, putting the power into the hands of the community um, and then also just supporting them, um, supporting them in a in a meaningful way for the long term. Um, you know, a lot of these guys, as you get, as you know, anybody who's building a podcast, a YouTube channel, a lot of time it's coming out of your pocket. It's coming out of uh, your time, uh, as we said, we're, we're, we're filming on Mother's Day right now. Right. Um, and that, that's time spent. And that's uh, it, it's you're spending it out of passion. But how can we better support you guys? How can we better support um, the, the entire ecosystem of creators out there that want to build around GOG? And that's where we build that 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 real trust with the people that are furthering the, uh, the community. And I, I think that's really important. That's a really good answer, and I, lo I love. First of all, I love your voice. I can hear you talk all day. You can just, <laughs> you can just, <laughs> we'll just do a loop of you like talking all day. I, I could do that. Uh, and uh, just for the record, WT is the one that said you smell. I didn't say you smell, man. For the record, that was WT. Uh, no, I just play. But no, that was a really, really, really good answer. And I know you know as you like like WT said, we're we're all about community. We know GOG is all about community and stuff. And uh, it's very, very good to hear those answers. Now, since we're on the on the on the social media uh, uh, side of things in the in the, in the community side so I, uh, yeah we're very heavily or, or uh, gog is very heavily involved on on twitter and discord i don't see a presence on like say like instagram or tiktok is that is there a reason is it strategic you don't think there's like a, a a viewership there or why why is there no uh you know tiktok or instagram because tiktok's pretty big you know it's a different kind yes. of uh <laughs> social but it's you know it's it's there you know I, I love TikTok. Yeah. Big fan of TikTok um, and and Instagram and Instagram Reels. Uh, I mean, the, the engagement numbers on those have have just been skyrocketing over the over the past years, uh, few years. Um, it, it's definitely something that we're 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 expanding to in the future. Um, in the past, it's really just been about resources, right? There was one person managing this stuff, right. and and that's not sustainable. I've been in that situation where I've been managed. I've been the only one managing like ten channels across the board, posting all different um, content sizes, and it, it can burn you out real quick. So, yeah, uh -huh. um, I think the priority has always been go where the community is, and that's been Discord, Twitter. But certainly we're looking at TikTok, we're looking at Instagram, we're looking at expanding onto these other social channels. Um, TikTok especially, I think, is going to be important in the future. Um, it's gotten bigger on um, on mobile game streaming. Um, so and I, I, I know they've been talking a little bit about, you know, pot potential streaming uh, tools on mobile in the future. So that's an area where I really want to focus on where if you can just fire up TikTok, go live from right from your phone playing GOG. That's going to be a powerful tool in the future. Yeah, for sure. And again, it's just, it's a, uh, it's more eyes on the pro on the project and getting, you know, just more awareness out there. And yeah, that's huge, especially being a mobile game, uh, being able to stream it live. I mean, that's, you can't ask for much more than that. Uh, don't worry. I'll be streaming this, uh, very, I will, I'll be streaming it a lot. I mean, I'm going to be streaming it a lot once, once I get the opportunity cool. for sure. Uh, but yeah, no great answer again. I mean, uh, TikTok's blown up uh, and you know, there's all these new ones coming out, new social media is coming out all the time. And I'm sure, uh, I'm sure you guys are going to crush that for sure. Right. So, like, you were talking about that with, with the, the other platforms, and you have a very decent history of taking communities and other projects and just elevating them high. I've seen one stat, like, in a year's time, you increased social engagement on a Discord by 550%, which just blew my mind. And I'm, like, trying to, like, put the numbers in my head. GOG's got roughly 100,000 people on their Discord. They're mainly on Twitter and Discord. You got all these other social platforms to expand to. Do you 
what is your vision or do you think it's possible to have that kind of success that you've had in the past with GOG to elevate it even amongst all, all, all these platforms or just in general of where they're at now? Yeah, and, and, and that's a, it's a really uh, a tricky question because there's so much that goes into that, right? Right. Um, but, you know, and, and yeah, I, I've taken, you know, I've joined projects where there's like 50,000 followers and grow it to, you know, a million. Uh, I've, I've been on projects where there's 3,000 followers and, and grew it to, you know, 30,000. I, I think the, the, the audience growth around um, these platforms, you need to think about Twitter, you need to think about Discord in, in, in the exact same way that we would plan around a product. Uh, you need to think about acquisition, retention, and engagement um, in, in, in a similar way. So, like, what is that pipeline funnel into our Discord look like, you know? Um, how are people discovering it? How are people finding it? Um, and how can we increase that, that growth? So, you know, um, one of the main things that I look at is, uh, is, is just making sure that anywhere that our our game is our 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 community is they're finding value um in that in in those spaces when they join it right so it's one thing to just have an inflated number of of followers or audience members but it's another thing to have a really really core engaged community mm -hmm. um and that's something that i'm really passionate about right so one of the things that i'm focusing on more than just the numbers is what is the value that someone gets when they join our our Twitter or when they join our our Discord, and how can we basically at every point of that that player journey from discovery of the platform to um, to to becoming an ambassador of the game to becoming a content creator like you guys um, ev at every step along that way how are we providing value to the to the user and you know so we're looking at things right now uh, we just kicked off a series around Twitter Spaces um, we're going to be doing a lot more of that kind of engagement where uh, where across the board as soon as you jump into Discord or onto our, our Twitter you are finding value as as someone who wants to learn more about the game especially I, in this like pre alpha stage where there's not a lot of game content right. connecting you with the devs is is really important I, yeah, I've noticed that you guys are really uh, putting the pedal down on the on the Twitter spaces and all the information. That's really it's been amazing to see uh, for sure, and you can tell like you guys are you guys uh, you guys have your eye on the prize, and and uh, you know you can see it, you can you can feel it's coming, you know. Um, yeah, and it's, you know one thing I want to say actually, uh, one thing I wanted to bring up was uh, you know mainstream. Okay, here's the thing with the mainstream uh, gamers, you know they have like the uh, not so a friendly look on say like the NFT uh you know take on nft games and stuff you know and how would you break that barrier what is what is something that you know you could do to break that barrier because i feel like it's so new and people are just unaware and stuff uh but once you understand like for me as soon as i understood it's like well, i mean like you know there's no other way this is this is the way so what what's what's a way to break that down what's a way to break down that barrier yeah and and you know I joined uh, blockchain gaming back in 2020, and 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 around then, I had no idea what you know an NFT was. I barely was invested in crypto, um, and uh, and and you know when I told my my colleagues and friends that I was jo going to join a blockchain gaming startup, they their eyes just glazed over, and they were like, "Cool." Yeah, have fun with that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, and and so the conversation now is has shifted drastically, right? If I were to tell, uh, be in that same situation um, two years ago, and and I were to tell my my colleagues, they would be very informed. Um, and that that information comes from many different places. And unfortunately, over the past, really in twenty twenty one, over the past year in twenty twenty one. We saw a lot of information come out about, about NFTs. They they skyrocketed. They became hugely mainstream, and they became very controversial around um, scams, around um, uh, security issues, around um, environmental issues. That's been a huge one for for mainstream gamers, and I think that's that still is going to be the case for quite a bit of while. Um, you know, I think. 
I think the NFT space in general has a bit of maturing to get to, um, to really be that beacon of understanding for many people. Um, for me, it was a it was a life changing moment the first time I was able to sell an in game skin or an in game right. item, and I was like, wow, this is going to change everything. Um, but not everybody is uh, uh, sees it that way, and I think there's still quite a bit of convincing that needs to be done, and it's going to happen over the course of time. Um, especially if you look at, you know, Mutable's protocol is gas free, um, yeah. carbon neutral. The arguments that a lot of people have against blockchain are 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 you know crushed as soon as they they see that right yep. mm -hmm. so i think if we start seeing more um more growth around something like immutable where it's it's low impact on the environment it is uh it doesn't feel scammy with all the gas fees as we've seen in the past with other projects mm -hmm. gas wars can be uh can be a nightmare um, yeah. And so if we're if we're really building this in a sustainable way, we need it to be easily accessible by the player, by by the the sort of just regular person who stumbles upon the game and then is like, oh, there's an NFT element to this. And then um, they get attached. But I think it, it's going to take some time. Uh, it's going to take a lot of education. So one of the things that we're focusing on right now is how are we educating not only our current base, but our future base as well. Um, and, and anybody who might be, you know, somewhat interested in, in jumping into GOG or NFT gaming. Um, but it's really going to start with, with that, that education piece, that growth of and maturity of the, of the space overall. Um, and then, you know, as soon as something starts taking off, that's when we're, we're really going to see see the ball rolling. Yeah, as w soon as that first game, you know, takes off. WT and I talk about it all the time. Um, the way that GOG is building is the right way to do it. It's you're building this proper game first and you're going from there. And the game, I mean, from what we played, we played in the alpha and stuff. And we'll get into that uh, in a bit. It was phenomenal. And it's like it has to be a good game first in order to uh survive and stuff and I, I love that answer i thought that was a really 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 good answer the way you, you broke it all down there uh wt yeah the the imx thing that you brought up uh i'm pretty sure you know uh bruno and i are both very yeah. big on imx uh one very of the, the two biggest things is they're they're concerned about security that's why they're sticking with the ethereum network and their other one is easy onboarding and from everything that i've just countlessly hours of research on this company they're they're heading in that direction and i think the biggest thing for people outside that don't get this is just the whole fear and not being educated factor which you mentioned i have personal friends that are lifelong gamers they know i'm into this stuff and like they, they they're still my friends but like <laughs> they're like i've been i've been with them forever 30 years of playing games and they still will not touch it. They don't believe me. They think I'm an idiot. And like, they're terrified of it. They're like, that's going to destroy gaming. I'm like, no, you're looking at it wrong. And they know me, they trust me and they still will not touch it. So you have this just crazy amount of fear. And I think you're right. We just, we have to educate it. So that leads me to my next question. We have this group of ambassadors in GOG and our mission was to kind of get that word out and educate people. And the 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 troops are there the desires there and this is not a knock on anybody but i think i can speak for the community that we feel like we've been kind of rudderless so to speak not we just we haven't been used properly and we're looking for that so uh i i are you involved first of all with the ambassadors and then if you are what what does it look like going forward for us for us ambassadors yeah absolutely um and so I'm, I'm I'm currently not involved in the ambassadors, but I want to be. You know, I, I'm only a month in here, um, but but the ambassadors uh, is is one of my priority projects right now, um, and not only just the group of the amb ambassadors that that um, are currently established, but also attracting new people who want to build. Um, one of the things that I'm I'm talking about nearly daily right now in in, in my calls is how do we how do we support the people that are are, are creating um, content and, and creating projects around uh, the game? Um, and also, you know, how do we support people in the future who want to 
build uh, build projects around our game. And, and that's something that I've been talking about quite a bit, quite heavily around, um, you know, whether it's uh, building out a fund where we uh, are, there's some, you know, uh, monetary rec recoup from token token grants uh, for building a project, or is it you know are, are we finding a way to um, work closer with the ambassadors to, um, to 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 build projects around GOG in in, in the sense of you know I, I'd love to see a project where someone wants to build a a Discord bot for us that you know uh, that that shows uh nft holders in, in our discord server or something like that so that we can better better support those players um how do we how do we and and then another aspect of that is like how are we looking at the people that are holding our N nfts especially the the people that bought in early and the founders you know how are we supporting those those uh those holders uh for the long term and I think we still have a lot of unanswered questions right now, but it's something we're really pushing forward, which is let's make sure that the people that are building and want to build with us are supported in the best way possible. They have a direct line with us. They have, um, uh, you know, a potential token grant. They have a potential, um, uh, you know, uh, 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 support so that they're not, you know, as as you guys know, not paying out of pocket for server costs or, uh, or or branding or you know taking your time out of the day for these these kinds of things. You know, we want to really really expand what it means to be an ambassador, what it means to be a um, a, a a a supporter of GOG, and you know, my goal coming in my, my, my sort of, you know, 10,000 foot vision coming into this community is I want to be able to make every player an ambassador, right? Mm -hmm. And, and to make sure that they know that they have a path from just casually playing the game to creating a really cool content piece or creating a, a really cool project, whether it's, you know, uh, a, a better way of visualizing our leaderboards or even their own game, you know, their own mini game around GOG. Um, I'd love to see some uh, people, you know, starting to build the, the entire ecosystem of what it means to be an ambassador. Um, we're still very early on in those planning stages, but it's a, these are the things that we're talking about that we're we're deciding on the direction right now and, and how, how, we're, how we grow the community is going to be really important in the future. That's great to hear. No, yeah, we. I mean, you know, we're very proud to be ambassadors ourselves. We love the project. We always love, you know, we love talking about. It. We love doing these podcasts and getting, you know, amazing people on like yourself. And it's good. And you're right. The ambassadors, I think, and and anybody can be one. Even if you know, for instance, you played the the pre alpha. You know, you put a video together, you put it up, and that gets more eyes on it. You know, you upload the video, you get your eyes on it. Tweet tweet about it, gets more eyes on it. You know, we're always trying to bring more eyes in, and and uh, it's such a good product. I mean, why why wouldn't you want your friends or family to know about it? You know what I mean? So, uh, great answer on the ambassadors. I mean, we we take that. Uh, we're very proud to be ambassadors ourselves, and like I said, we love we love this project and the people involved um, as well. Now, I want to talk about something you did. You did a massive thing. You. Um, you were involved in a massive collab uh, when you worked with Miss Mythical Games and you worked with Burberry. You did a one with Burberry. You did a, a collab with them, which sold out in like something like 20 seconds, uh, which is incredible. Okay. Like, which is absolutely incredible. Do you plan on doing something similar with GOG? Like, uh, you know, uh, NFTs or a collab or some sort? Is there anything that, you know, that, that you have planned or that you can say or, you know, maybe you can't say, but is there anything you have uh, any plans similar or anything like that? Yeah. Uh I, I think if, we, if we're taking a look at what we're building here is we're building a metaverse, right? We're mm -hmm. building a metaverse style product. Um, and the metaverse style products um, are often, you know, brand agnostic. They, they, they want to sort of uh, it, it, be, in a, <clears throat> be in an internet kind of space or a virtual space where, um, where our, 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 our brands can really shine. Right. And uh, they're they're connecting that gameplay, that integration into the game and then that uh, ability to buy and sell on on a marketplace. And um, I think that's really important for the growth of our game in the future. Um, we do have 
some really, really exciting partnerships to announce in the future. Nice. I can't say anything about it right now. <laughs> That's fair. That's gonna fair. See, <laughs> you are going to be seeing partnerships in the future uh, with large name brands. Um, and it is uh, the thing that we have that we've been working on is going to be really cool. Um, and I, I, I can't wait to bring that to the community. Um, but, <clears throat> you know, I think one of the main things is we need our game first. We need, we need our, our product to be fun. Uh, we we need you know we need people to be to be engaging with us um, uh, so that so that those brands can actually see their product uh, or, or their branding in the game. Um, but I, I mean I, I think if you look at other products similar to 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 GOG, there's there's so many opportunities for us to um, build around the characters, around the items, around the um, you know, the, the accessory pieces, the, the gilding element too. Um, there's, uh, there's tons that we can do with, with partnerships and we have an incredible, incredible business development department and we're hiring more. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be an exciting time for GOG in the future. Yeah. It's yeah, the, you're not, go ahead. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, you're not joking about the hiring part. I uh, I had a chance to look last week, and I was blown away at how many people IMX yeah. had hired for in the, just the past month. Just the past month, like for IMX, for Gods and Chain, and for Guild of Guardians. Like I don't. When people fud this project, I just I I just shake my head. I'm just like you don't you guys don't even understand what they're building here. You don't even understand. And the 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 collab part's got me really interested because I know. Uh, GOG has done one with Energy, the esports company. Uh, they have a little bit going on with Sandbox. I think there's more coming with that. And did you happen to see Derek's tweet about uh, some apes? And uh, there was something else there too. I forget the other one, but it, one was Bored Apes. He he put out a tweet about Bored Apes, and I was like, hmm, I wonder if that is uh, something coming. I don't. I, you probably can't comment on that, but I, I'm just wondering if you've seen the tweet. Did you? Have I, I, I didn't. I didn't see the tweet. Uh, okay. No. Yeah. Maybe we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's funny. Uh, no, I mean, I'll, I'll say this: uh, Immutable has been growing like crazy. It's uh, we're at two eighty uh, uh, as of as of last Friday or as of this Friday, two oh, two hundred eighty employees uh, across the board, and um, yeah, it, it's been amazing being a part of this for the last month, right? Yeah, <laughs> only been a was, month. Wasn't it like just a few years ago they had three people? They went yeah. from like three yeah. to two hundred and eighty. <laughs> like that's incredible. No, yeah. and and like GOG was just like Derek at one point. It was just Derek for for that's for a amazing. while. So mm -hmm. yeah. WT and I it's, talk um, about it all the time, just how how just bullish we are on IMX as a whole. Just it's how can you not be? I mean, their vision, you can see it, you know, you can see what they want to be and what they want to build and and uh, I see it. Like we see it. We talk about it all the time. So uh, speaking of, you said, you know, about a good game and all that stuff. You want to get the game out and stuff. Did you play the pre-alpha? I played the pre-alpha quite a bit. Uh, if you did, if you did, what was your favorite character? And what character do you usually like? Do you like the tanks, the healers? What do you like? Uh, yeah, I did play the game. Um, I, it was actually, I was up at GDC with uh, the rest of the the IMX team um and, and the GOG team just uh it was like the week before I I started and on my flight back to LA from San Francisco uh I would had had downloaded the the pre-alpha and waiting for my flight I was playing the pre-alpha uh I played it uh, uh so much <laughs> uh not probably not as much as you guys I, I think I saw some of your your names on the uh leader leader high up there on the leaderboards <laughs> Uh, but uh, I did play it, and um, the the uh, the first thing I said to the team in our group chat, uh, in our GDC group chat, was this game is fucking awesome. Yeah. <laughs> can, I, can I curse? I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. It's, it's, <laughs> okay. it's Mother's Day. It's Mother's Day. Well, <laughs> Mother's Day. Uh, it was uh, good. I, uh, I I I said that to to the team and. Um, you know, I think there was a little bit of hesitation when when releasing the the, the pre-alpha. It's always always scary as a development team to put the game out into the hands of the players for the very first time. And this is this is you know not even the game. It is a vertical slice of the game. It is right. you know ten percent of what we actually want to do with this game. Um, but it's, uh, you know, and the fact that we got such great response from it of people, you know, loving, loving the gameplay, loving, uh, uh, 
um, uh, loving the characters, uh, obviously lots of work to do. Um, you know, we're not, we're not resting uh, on our laurels from, uh, the group, the, the positive feedback we're drilling in and really understanding what people want, what, what, you know, excited people, what people want to see more of, uh, you know, I think there were, there, there was definitely some like frustrations around the UI and like the inventory system. And, uh, but, I, uh, but you know, all those things we, we already know, <laughs> we, we knew all these things going in, uh, but it was really just about like, what's the perception, what is the, 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 the understanding and, um, and it was a big sigh of relief from the team to, to know that, you know, more or less it functioned really well. Uh, it was, it, it was fun to play, uh, and, um, and the characters were exciting. Um, so. I think taking taking uh, that away from it, you know, w w the team is really excited here, uh, and and everyone in the I IMX is like super excited about GOG, and we're really really putting in all of our attention to make sure that launch and you know the next testing phase uh, iteration of of our games um, are, are are fun to play. Um, and to answer your your second part of the question, I usually play tanks uh, or like a tanky character. <laughs> I'm the same. I'm the same. Uh, yeah, it's like just my ag aggressive American nature. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> um, but I uh, I actually ended up playing um, uh, it's the name Ari quite a bit, um, mm. and uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I um I yeah I'm the same I'm, I'm more of those I just want to run in do the damage get in there get in your face kind of thing I I like you said yeah. I loved the, the 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 alpha was incredible I mean it blew my mind it, to be honest with you it was better than I I expected it to be a good game it was better than I expected and it just I think that's the majority of I would say the consensus is that people were blown away with how smooth how good it was and and, and all of that it was it was it blew my mind it blew my mind. and for a pre alpha I, I, it was smoother yeah. than 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 most games which is like it's, yeah. just, it's amazing. I, I think that needs to be said again, right? Like mm -hmm. I've been a I've been a part of games where the launch is, you know, nobody can connect, right? Nobody can download, nobody can install. Uh, you know, I, I I've, I've been a part of nightmare launches, right? Uh, and the fact that this was a pre-alpha demo, you know, not even close to what our final product is going to be and it ran smooth i, I like had no issues Amazing. downloading i had no issues installing it was loaded up i think i maybe only crashed like one or two times um and and but the fact that it like for the most part most people were were you know ran into very few issues that's promising for the future exactly that's yep. that was my main thing too is like there there was hardly any issues and you just you just don't see that and for me that was a bullish sign it was just like hey this this has got some real legit potential that we we already knew but it was like it was proof in the pudding it was like yeah. it just absolutely amazing yeah you know? proof so, in the pudding yeah yep. <laughs> so, love me some pudding i gotta tell you right now <laughs> yeah you, you, uh, you mentioned obviously you're from america you're on the east coast uh i'm in the i'm in the center of america i'm, I'm on the west coast I just insulted you. I just I'm insulted you. Sorry. The, I'm, I'm from the East Coast. So I, I, pre, I appreciate that. Though. Okay, so you're West Coast. <laughs> I'm in the middle of the USA. Bruno's to the north of me. He's a he's a he's a Canadian. A yeah, you know? fellow Canadian over so, here. Just lonely. We're Canadian. North Americans. Yeah. But to my knowledge, I think you might be the only Immutable X slash GOG representative over here. So there's been rumbling about a meetup at some point because we got we got a lot of GOGers close to or on the east coast right now baird uh salami swears heading out there and several others uh step fam's out by you i think somewhere but what the, the general consensus would you be up for an in real meetup like a gog oh. function or something like that eventually oh yeah absolutely i i want to i want to have so many meetups <laughs> and and I, I will correct you there, there actually are a couple people based out of the u.s uh in, in gog we actually have a, a, a lot uh oh a, a lot more than you might think we we have our our head of marketing sangita is in austin um nice. we have josiah who's on the dis, design That's team right. who's out in north carolina uh, we also have Nalan and Aaron, who I think both are in Colorado. Um, oh, Nalan's wow. on on the UI team. Aaron's the the creative director. 
Um, so, so we got we got a bunch in, in the U.S. Uh, and it's growing. We're 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 actively hiring in the U.S. We're actively hiring. Like that's one of the great things about this remote work right. uh, is that we can work from anywhere. I'm based out in in Venice Beach in L.A. Um, and uh, so yeah, I mean, like we can really work from anywhere. But to go back to your point. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> I want to do a meetup. I, I would love to hang out with you guys. Um, I think. One of the things that we're also going to be focusing on in the future is providing you the ability to create your own meetups, right? So we can't do every single meetup. We can't send a representative. You know, Derek is. You know, most of most of the heads are are out in um, in in Sydney, and it, it, they can't do twenty hour flights to to for a one hour meetup at a bar. <laughs> right, right. If you you know, I think one of the things that we want to do is empower the community to really take it on their own uh, onus to, to build their own events, their own IRL events. Um, and I'd love to see that. We're also targeting, you know, things, uh, things, things like around um, traditional gaming uh, uh, events um, and also NFT gaming focused events as well. So, uh, you know, if you're flying out to one of those in the future, there are, it's high probability that we might be doing some kind of like GOG, Cool. bar meetup or restaurant meetup or um have a panel or something like that we'll, we'll be ramping up those those opportunities for you guys to come meet us uh in oh, the future cool. yeah cool. but I, I i you know also if there's an event out there that i should attend hit me up in my dms on twitter or, or discord let me know about it because i want to i want to meet as many gog uh guardians uh, uh, out there as possible first two rounds are on wt how about that hey <laughs> <laughs> all right I'll take it. <laughs> That's awesome, man. No, that on it was really, really, really good to hear like your insights and just you know your your perspective on everything. It's just amazing. I love hearing you know your future plans and 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 all that stuff. Is there anything you want to close up with? Anything you want to say? Anything other than you know you love the podcast or you know just jump. anything anything you want to say on your way out? Any leaks? Anything? <laughs> you know, I just. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have been awesome. Uh, I've really enjoyed uh, enjoyed hanging out with you guys. Um, I, I will say, keep an eye on our Twitter. Keep an eye on our Discord. We got a, a, a ton of amazing stuff coming out for you guys. Um, and, and just to sort of reiterate, you know, what I've been talking about is I want to build with the community. I want to empower the community to build. I want to empower you guys and, and support you guys that are already creating content. Um, I want to work with our ambassadors. I want to work with our founders. Uh, and and uh, and please, 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 don't be shy about reaching out to me on across you know social media, across Discord. Uh, my DMs are open, so uh, so hit me up if you have an idea. Hit me up if you have uh, if you if you're interested in GOG uh, or even joining joining the the immutable GOG team. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm 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 open. Please uh, please reach out. <laughs> that's you, the bottom line you've awesome. been absolutely amazing i gotta say i love mm -hmm. i love the personality the voice uh <laughs> every, the background i mean but you know what's not the love you're you're absolutely incredible so uh thank you so much for doing this i mean uh you're, you're a great great conversation i loved hearing all about it uh wt is there anything you want to say on the way out uh thanks for letting us pick your brain uh yeah i i, I knew there was something uh, something about you and i'm really glad we had you on and uh, for everybody else out there, don't forget to celebrate the rest of this day with your mother. Give her a hug. Tell her how much you love her. And thanks, ladies. We appreciate it. Yes. Thank you guys so much for being here. Yes, for sure. <laughs> uh, everybody, thank you for listening. If you made it this far, you know what to do. Hit the sub. Leave a comment. Let us know. Uh, and thank you, everybody, for watching. Thank you so much, Justin, for being here. WT, thank you. You know, you're a beauty. Uh, you guys are amazing. We are out of here. We love you. We'll talk to you next time. Peace.